Hello, Adam. How are you doing? I'm good, Marina. How are you? I'm great. Um, I must say it's a pleasure to talk to you. I grew up listening to your song, so <laughs> it's a pleasure to talk to you, really. Thank you so much. I'm so yeah. happy today. This is more interviews with Brazil today than probably the entire rest of my career. I'm yeah. so excited about it because I get these things, these DMs on Instagram all the time that say, please come to Brazil, but you never know if that's just one person. And, I, and I've never had much press from Brazil, so that's how you really tell if you can go to a country. You know, and then today I've had six interviews with Brazilian journalists. Uh, it's the most I've ever had. And I, I've just been so excited because uh, we want to tour in Brazil, you know. Yes, and I'm sure they told they 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 told you that your songs play a lot here in Brazil, especially accident, accidentally in love, Mr. Jones. They're huge here. Did oh, you great. know that? No, I didn't. I didn't know it at all. <laughs> especially because of uh, Shrek, accident, accidentally in love is in the soundtrack, and I remember when it came out, it, it was everywhere. Like every time you turn on the radio. He was there, so huh. I, 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 I imagine you had no idea of that, but it, like he played a lot. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so let's talk about the new material, the new EP. Um, how was the creative process of this this work? It was interesting because it was very different. Um, because I, I was I was on my friend's farm in England a lot of the time, uh, really no no people around just me and two dogs a lot of the time and i i hadn't wanted to write for a while i just hadn't i, I didn't want to make a record is the real thing you know uh, and then I, I just found myself wanting to play piano and and then starting to write and i wrote tall grass one day and elevator boots the day after that and and uh it was weird the way i i thought i was just extending the end of tall grass it was the day after i'd written it and i was playing it and i thought what i was doing was like maybe thinking about putting another section on making it a longer song you know but then i i sang this line bobby was a kid from around the town and i thought oh no no that's not that's that's a different song uh, what if what if i made like a series of songs where each the end of one is the beginning of the next you know and i could make a suite that all flowed together even though the songs were different and that got me really really excited and then i wanted to write you know and then i wrote elevator boots and it was like it worked really well it, that transition from tall grass to elevator boots was so cool that i wanted to do a whole thing like that yes because they, they sound like two different songs but yeah. you don't feel like the you don't feel the transition it just like okay it's another song but when did it happen? When did it switch? It's so cool. I was listening to it again this morning, and I love it. It's it's so cool, and Thank you. It, it it just flows. It is so great, and it flows so quickly. It's just four songs. Do you plan to to release another EP or a full album? Do you have what plans do you have? Well, I'm gonna to try to now. I mean, there was no plan to do anything except for this. Like, mm -hmm. I just wanted to write a suite and see if it would work, you know? Cause it's, it's also like, is it even gonna work? You know? And when I, when we finished it and I heard it, I was so excited. It's, it was maybe one of the most satisfying moments in my career because it did work. And it had only been in my imagination for so long. Uh, and after that, like, I, I think somebody, one of my friends asked me, well, sweet one, is there gonna be a sweet two? And I said, yes, because I thought <laughs> I wanna do another one. Um, so I've written little pieces of it, like some of the, I haven't finished any of the songs yet, but I'm going to, uh, when I'm done with all the commitments for the album in a couple of weeks, I'm going to go to, uh, to England again, and I'm going to go to my friend's farm and I'm going to try and write the rest of it. I want to try and write a second suite. Uh, and then we'll try and record it. We're going to tour in the fall, so we can't record it then, but maybe, uh, at the end of the year or like maybe November, December or new year's, I don't know. I, I we could finish it. And then uh, I would love to be able to tour around the world next year. I mean, I, mm. I want to get back to Europe, South America. We've never been to South America. I know, I know it's not a good idea right now in any of those places. I know that the, the COVID mm -hmm. is killing Brazil at the moment. And uh, it's still, they're having a lot of trouble with the vaccine in, in Europe too. It's just taking a little time. Um, but I'm hoping next year that'll be very different, you know? Yeah, we hope so.
Yeah. And did you did you feel different writing on on the countryside of Europe, of the UK, than home? Yeah, it was weird. I, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. I mean, I've always just written, but I mean, I've always written essentially by myself in a room. Mm -hmm. Wherever the room was, it was my bedroom at home. I mean, sometimes I wrote with the band, like uh, Angels of the Silences or Catapult. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time I wrote, you know, by myself. And so it wasn't that different there. It's just that I guess it was surprising because I've always been very much a city kid. You know, mm -hmm. and, and the places I live, the cities I live, the bustle of city life is a big part of my songwriting. You can hear it in... You know, whether it's Los Angeles in Hollywood or San Francisco in Berkeley or or New York City for the last like 15, 18 years. The mm -hmm. city's always been a huge part of my writing. Yeah. But I always wrote alone. So in, in one sense, it was very familiar. And in another sense, it was very strange. You know? <laughs> yes. And how was he working with Brian Zach, the producer? Uh, well, I, you know. I thought for most of my career that I never wanted to work with anyone twice because you learn so mm -hmm. much from a producer <laughs> that it always felt like yeah. I could learn more from someone else, you know? And it wasn't until mm -hmm. we made Saturday nights and worked with Gil Norton again that we ever worked with anyone twice. And, but we worked on Sunday mornings with Brian for that and it was so great that we did it again for Somewhere Under Wonderland and now it feels just kind of like a really cool collaborative partnership. I feel mm -hmm. like we just have a really good thing together. He's great with the band. He really, he pushes them like I do, but he also really helps them to develop stuff. And, he, and, and he's really good with me too, that we're really creative together. Him, Immer, me, Charlie, it gets very creative. Um, and I, I love that relationship. So I, I become very comfortable working with Brian and you worry that you could get stagnant, but mm -hmm. it hasn't happened. It's just been really, really creative. So I, it was fantastic again. Yeah. And what can you tell us about the short film that is going to be released with uh, Clifton Collins Jr.? Oh, Clifton. Well, Clifton's like my, he's like family for me. We've been friends yeah. for, I met him, I don't know, 27 years, 28, 25 years wow. ago. I don't know, so long ago. <laughs> and we've been friends, you know, he's an amazing person. Uh, and he's raised, you know, Clifton was raised by his grandfather, Pedro, who was mm -hmm. one of the original Hispanic movie stars. You know, he's a stock a member of John Wayne's stock company uh, and uh, quite a character. He trained Clifton to act, to sing, to dance. <laughs> Clifton's a great dancer. He can soft shoe because his grandmother, uh -huh. I mean, his grandmother and his grandfather came from that tradition. They were like entertainers, comedians, dancers, and singers in South Texas, in West Texas, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, the movie, I don't know. The movie's very different because the movie is Bill Fishman's his vision of, of like, it's not the story of what the actual story of these songs is. Um, yes. It's a story that he created, but it's, it's pretty cool. I, I haven't seen the whole thing finished yet, um, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, I kind of just gave him free reign to do it. He, he wanted to do a film project with it and we just let him do it. Um, the only requirement I made was that he used Clifton. Uh, okay. I really wanted Clifton. It's just like, there's such a long friendship and Clifton's been like Clifton was in the house the whole time I was writing. Uh, he was here doing a movie the whole time we were writing Somewhere Under Wonderland. So mm -hmm. he, he like held the mic for a lot of the demos <laughs> for that song. Um, wow. And he's just been, you know, on like Cover Up the Sun on, uh, mm -hmm. on Somewhere Under Wonderland is really an homage to Clifton and his grandfather. That's mm -hmm. what that song is about. Um, so the film, I don't really know. I mean, there's a story to it that Bill came up with about. Uh, a guy who used to be a rock star years ago and uh, a love affair he had and the daughter that he doesn't know about and she's searching for him. That's kind of the story of the movie, mm -hmm. which is not the story of the songs. It's different. He, he came up with, there is no plot like that to Butter Miracle. Um, but he mm -hmm. came up with this plot so that he could make it like a film. And it's pretty cool. What I've seen, I've done, yeah. I've helped out on the editing of it a bit, but it's really Bill's project. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just think it's really cool that he did it. No, oh, that's cool. And Clifton is a great actor. Oh, I love so him. Good. Yeah, one of my best friends and one of my favorite actors. And he, you know, he's finally getting his due. It's probably there's a movie that he made a year or two ago called Jockey, and he mm -hmm. just won. It's a movie about an old, an aging uh, horse jockey, mm -hmm. uh, and he's coming to the end of his career uh, and that part of his life and Clifton plays the lead and it, it won a bunch of like, I think it won like best actor award at Sundance. 
it's brilliant. And I think finally now uh, Clifton is getting some of the acclaim and the attention he deserves. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like that, it's a leading man role in that mm -hmm. movie, in Jockey. And it, he, he is so good as a leading man. You watch mm -hmm. this movie and you're just, it, he, he knocks you out. He's so brilliant, you know. Um, I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to search the, the movie because I'm interested now. I don't know if it's been released yet. I mean, he sent it to me ah, about okay. a year ago before it went to Sundance because uh, he wanted me to see it. And then it won all the awards. It won Best Actor mm -hmm. for him. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's going to be released soon. I don't think it's out yet, but it's called Jockey. And if okay. you get a chance, because my friend Clifton is a brilliant <laughs> actor. And he's been amazing as a supporting actor in a lot of great movies. Capote, he's incredible. Traffic, mm -hmm. he's so good as Frankie Flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's amazing uh, in Westworld. But like, yeah. this is a chance to, to see what happens when he carries a whole movie and he's, he's so good. It's, it's amazing, it's a great film. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And as I said, um, you've never been to Brazil, but do you get a lot of messages from Brazilian fans? Can they expect a tour here when it's safe to play here? We're not ready yet, but... Well, I get a lot of messages asking when we're coming to Brazil, but I've always thought, you know, you can't tell with those because it could be just one person. And Brazil is an enormous country, you know? Yeah. And, and because I've never done much press from Brazil. So, I mean, that's a better way to judge it than people on Instagram because press means some publication wants to write a story about you, and that's for a lot of people. But this record, I mean, just today I did six interviews with Brazil. So yeah. I... I, I I'm really, op really hopeful because, yeah, I'm, I want to go. I, mean, I want to go to Brazil. I've been learning to cook some Brazilian. Well, I spent a lot of time this year trying to teach myself to cook everything. Like, yeah. I learned because I couldn't do anything. So I wanted to cook. I learned to cook all kinds of stuff. And one of the things I did was to try and learn to cook some Brazilian dishes. Like I wanted to make a, a moqueca mm -hmm. and, and, and a ginzim de calinha. Is that ah, okay. Called? You know, like chicken and, and, and uh, shrimp. I, I made okay. that and I made a moqueca with seafood. Um, uh -huh. So I've been trying to learn to cook some uh, Brazilian okay. dishes too this year because I love Brazilian food. So I might as well yeah. just come there and have someone who's better make them for me. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because it, it, it's, it's um, you, you make, you're successful here. Here. And it's sad that you didn't know that you thought there was one person because it's not. Well, you, you start to say a lot here. <laughs> tell, tell the promoters sure in your article. That. Tell the promoter yeah. to bring us, to bring Counting Crows to Brazil. So, because, I mean, every band wants to go to every, every country. It's just yeah, that you sure. can't go unless a promoter makes you an offer that's, that you yeah. can do, you know? So um, we're, we're there. Make, tell the promoter to make the offer. I've told every journalist from Brazil today because we really want to go. Yeah, sure. Would you like to send a message for, for your Brazilian fans? Last question. <laughs> yes. Tell everyone to bring us to Brazil. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank I you. had a great time talking to you. As I said, it was a pleasure. I grew up listening to your songs. My parents love your songs. Um, every time I go to your to my parents' house, they are always listening to Mr. Jones, Accidentally in Love, <laughs> Biggie and a Taxi. So it's well, it's a pleasure to when I was find a kid, talk to you. You know, I played football when I was a kid. And yeah. uh, the first professional game I ever went to is the New York Cosmos came to play the earthquakes in the Bay Area and I saw Pele play. And I, wow. I was so in love with Brazil from that point on that I was I, I was obsessed. In, the United States wasn't in the World Cup anyways. So I grew up obsessed with Brazilian players, Socrates and uh, Pele, and then later Romario and Bobeto. That was when, that got me in trouble because the World Cup that year was in America and I was rooting for Brazil <laughs> because I love Romario and Bobeto. Um, so it got me in a lot of trouble. But uh, yeah, it's been a love my whole life. That's my, that was always my favorite team which was not popular in America once we became a World <laughs> Cup team. But uh, I would love to go there. I would so love to go there. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, we hope to see you soon here. We hope to see the band soon here. Thank you.